everybody, and welcome to Between Plays Stock Market Strategies. This morning with us, we have uh, Mr. Pierre Levy of Deep South Resources. Uh, how are you doing today, Pierre? Very good, and you? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Uh, Pierre, so we're just asking for a um, an update on uh, the corporation. Um, how are things going? Uh, where are we at? And um, you know, where do we plan to be in the future uh, concerning, you know, the permitting and uh, the stuff that we spoke about in the last uh, interview, in the last video? Okay. Um, just to get back on uh, on the Namibian project, I think it's probably good to have a, a refresh memories. <laughs> yes. We uh, we uh, have uh, the Ministry of Mine has refused to renew the license on the Hybe Copper project in June two thousand twenty one. Uh, we got an injunction immediately to protect or to prevent the Ministry of Mines to issue a license to anyone else on the project. And then we we asked the court to review the decision of the minister. The uh, court went on and the court case went on and the uh, uh, verdict was rendered on March 13th, where the judge uh, gave us the, the, the uh, verdict was was in our favor. And uh, he made it clear that it's not the mandate of his court to grant a license. So he ordered the minister to reopen the application for renewal procedure that had taken place in January 2021. But this time to take in consideration uh, all the facts presented by Deep South. And, and he lists uh, quite long, uh, a certain number of facts. And uh, uh, some like... Uh, you know, the size of the investment we have done as opposed to the proposal we made originally, where we invested 50% more money. Uh, we uh, also, the stage of development where we brought the project, uh, the fact also that COVID has slowed us down for about six months, but uh, there was, despite that, we ended up investing more money than proposed. So, and there's other like this. So, uh, we, the ministry were having a month, about a month to, uh, file an appeal in the Supreme court, which they didn't do. So that's a positive step. Okay. Uh, we met with the minister and his team, uh, uh mid uh, April. And then we, the idea was to resubmit or represent them, the uh, project, what we were proposing, uh, which is completing a feasibility study within three years time. And uh, the uh, and when we have been stopped on the project, that's what we were starting. Okay, All right. so we we uh, uh, we looked at what they were having in their file. We uh, discussed together to update some of our documents, and we also agreed to give us more information for the information that they have not received uh, in 2001 after we applied for the renewal, like drilling results and uh, other stuff like this. So. The minister then mentioned to his team that he wants that a priority. And as soon as uh, uh, Deep South has completed his filing, uh, he wanted them to uh, treat that as soon as possible. So we have completed our filing on April 27th. Uh, and normally, you know, it's, it's bureaucracy. So, you know, there's a lot of protocols and a lot of things that have to be done. So Absolutely. It, it, in, in a normal situation, it could take about three, four months in average to renew a license. But because the minister has put that as a priority, I was expecting probably a month, a month and a half, two months, maybe. So we're at about a month now. So we have started looking where where where, where is it standing at the moment. Yes. And uh, we know that the analysis of the file is completed and they will have a meeting soon with some officers at the ministry to you know, discuss the matter and make a recommendation to the minister. So it does, it, it does not give us a timeline, but we know it's moving well and we know that it could happen anytime. Okay, okay so that's great. So we're looking, you know, we're, we're not we really have, um, well, it's, it's, it's within the, you know, the coming months, let's just say, this is what we're, we're, we're estimating do on the fact of like, you know, the way processing works and the way that, you know, right now the government, but it, this is a really a good thing though, because I mean, even though it went through the courts, the courts say, Hey, listen, let's just re let's reopen this. So everything is on a positive step. It's just a matter yes. of waiting and having patience at the moment. That's what it seems. Right, it's a matter like. of time to let them yeah. do their job properly as they should do it. 
Yes. And this time, I'm pretty sure also they will be very careful to not make any mistake because it's an order of a court. So, uh, so which, which would make sense, you know. <laughs> so that Absolutely. can take just a little bit longer to make sure that everything is is done as per the you know the the the, the legal procedure you know within the mining law. And so, just just out of curiosity, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. J just out of curiosity, once the once uh, Deep South Resources um, does get that permit up. I mean, what is the immediate steps that you're expecting to do like um, after that? Like, what is what do you have in place? Is there any plan moving forward from them, you know, so yes, that investors can like, you know, understand where your mindset's at and the company's at? We will resume immediately the wow. uh, the program that that we have stopped in June, in June, in June 2021. Now, That's amazing. We have some cash to complete some things that were already, uh, you know, that that were nearly completed like uh there's one thing we we know we will do also it's announced some drilling results that we were asked, we were having that have never been published because we received the results after we lost the license so oh. we were allowed to publish results on the property that was not ours anymore oh, so well, that's in, that's very interesting yeah yeah and and you know it's it's the last set of uh, of results that we received in july <laughs> something like two or three weeks after we lost the license so uh, that's something we will do. But the uh, the other thing also is that with uh, Knight Pizol, a, a renowned uh, engineering firm, we had uh, uh, proceeded with uh, four scoping studies. One is uh, uh, water usage. Another one is uh, power alternatives, uh, solutions. Another one is uh, leach pad assessment and so on. So we have four different scoping studies that are nearly completed. They were in a draft form when we lost the license. Okay. Unbelievable. So immediately we can complete that within a couple of weeks, it's done and we can announce that. Uh, and we can start disclosing the, uh, the results of these scoping studies. Uh, we will have the results of the drilling. We also can resume some uh, bio heat leaching uh, test work that were to happen in, in Australia. We have shipped 800 kilos of uh, samples over there to start bio-leaching tests. And <laughs> they were just starting when we, <laughs> when we had to pull the plug. So everything is in place. We can start that anytime. We have the cash to move forward with, uh, with these different activities. Uh, then we will immediately go on site to uh, uh, prepare the site to uh, resume drilling eventually. But that will take a little bit longer because when we had to leave the site, it's, uh, uh, you know, we had to pack all this, uh, the, the equipment, fire everyone. So now we have to rehire people. We have to reinstall the equipment. We have probably to repair some roads. Uh, so oh, there will be a couple yeah. of months of, uh, of preparation. In the meantime, we will certainly look to raise some money to finance the uh, drilling program. The first phase is 5,000 meters. So it's not a big program. It's, it's the the balance of the first 5,000 meters that we already done in 2021. Okay. And uh, so we need about $2 million or le even less uh, to get that uh, done. And at the same time to produce a, uh, uh, an updated resource estimation for D3101. Uh, so that will be the first step. Then when okay. we get those results and the resource estimation, we will define more uh, drilling targets that we will be able to do in the second year. And uh, we're planning to about 15,000 meters. Uh, so it's uh, then we will need to raise money, but that will be on the back of results. And we estimate that from what we were seeing so far, we think the results will be good enough to, to uh, uh, will be very in interesting. In fact, they were okay. very, very good results. And uh, they were completely changing the, uh, the, the uh, vision of development of that project. Okay. So, um, so on the back of that, we were pretty convinced we'll have a good added value and we will be able to attract more funding. Now, I just have I have two more questions. Well, actually, one is not really a question. One is more of a clarification because we, we mentioned a few times when we lost our license. But I just want to make sure that people are listening to this video for the maybe some people are listening to this video for the first time and not the last one. That when we state lost the license, this is not of any fault of Deep South resources. I mean, this was a combination of um, certain people in government uh, doing certain things, I believe. Uh, you know, I guess people should look at the last video. We'll put the link up here for the last video. That'll explain that properly. Um, also, it was during the COVID time. And 
uh, things were already difficult. I mean, for everybody, right? And the macroeconomics environment was just uh, horrendous logistically for anything, but it happened during yeah. that time. But the government wasn't taking into account all these things that you had already done. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, okay. that's exactly it. Now, what happened is that two individuals at very high level at the ministry. Uh, <laughs> I didn't with, want to say it. <laughs> link with, uh, link with a, a company named Orange River Mining. Orange River Mining has, has uh, applied on our license. Uh, they convinced the minister that we were not doing anything on our, on our license. And the minister, with reason, followed the advice of his advisors. Yes. No, it's uh, he cannot control everything, and he's no. not a specialist in anything, you know. So, so uh, he he, uh, he followed them and and just uh, decided to follow their their advice to not renew the license. But what we discovered later, just just after our our case was closed with the court, before the verdict, but after the last hearing that these two individuals and that company Orange River Mining had done the same with some other project, one in lithium, and uh, the lithium license was, was denied by the minister, and the, the Orange River Mining has been granted a new license on this, the same project, turned around and sold that to a Chinese company for about 4 million US, and there was allegation that the individual at the Ministry of Mines have you know, receive quite a lot of money out of that. I'm saying allegation because so far it's what it is. Okay. It's, yes. uh, and uh, one of them has left the ministry and uh, he's under investigation by the uh, anti-corruption commission. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, the other one has been moved out of his job at the ministry, but kept a link with the ministry, but maybe eventually under uh, investigation also. Uh, so it's, it's, it, and yeah. it, they've done the same on five different project, including Deep South project, the Hype Copper project. Um, so it had nothing to do with what we have done or what we have not done or it's, it's nothing like this. Nothing to do with the company. Just, just a tentative, uh, an hijack attempt. Okay? Yes. And uh, in our case, the reason it didn't work is because we immediately run to the court to get an injunction over the project. Smart. The okay. other companies have not done that. So that made that they lost their license that has been given to somebody else and that's it prescription you know? and all that kind of stuff that goes into it they didn't follow up and they lost in but time now the ministry are very very uh because it's not the type of thing you see on a regular basis in namibia you know it's like uh, it's not that type of country these kinds of things can happen anywhere in the world in any countries you have two two jack yeah, that at some point have decided to make make money Yep. And it was going well for them fooling around with small private companies in Namibia that cannot defend themselves. Yes. But at some point in time, they became probably a bit arrogant. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they decided to try try big, bigger fish. And that's what happened. It has blown in their face. You know, so Unbelievable. That's it. Like a, but what is very important to consider is that the rule of law prevails in Namibia because the court gave us reason. Correct. The court ruled in favor. Okay, so that's very, very important. It's not a fun exercise. We we would, all of us would have, you know, preferred to not live that yes. for sure. But at least yeah. we know one thing: we're well protected by by the by the the system in Namibia. On that side, it's not an issue. Well, that's great, and that's that's why it's important for people to understand that the process that's happening right now, and the fact that the courts have said, "Hey, listen, you guys, uh, you know, it's up to you now. Do your work." And this is what's really important about all this. Uh, and have uh, have one more question, actually. I, I don't want to get my apples and oranges uh, all uh, mixed up here, okay? So I just I would like for this to be explained to me, please. So that also the viewers, I'm hearing something about results from another mine. Is this possible? This is Deep South. Is this is also Deep South. Uh, can you correct me uh, if you know what I'm talking we, about? We have other projects, exploration projects, not not mines. We have other project in Zambia. Okay, under Deep South Resources, though, correct? Or yeah, yeah. okay, yes. 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 You know, it's it's important to have more than one project. Yes. And uh, the projects in Zambia are not at the same same level of development than the one in uh, in Namibia. It's completely different. It's very green field. Uh, and what we what we have done recently is uh, completing a soil sampling program on two licenses out of three. Okay. One of them was already having some geophysical survey and some soil sampling where we were seeing some large anomalies. 
uh, copper anomalies, copper cobalt anomalies. Copper cobalt, and, okay. Uh, and then uh, we decided to redo the same samples over what they have done to okay. make sure that we're on the same, you know, just to prove what they have done and to infill in between the sampling. And what we see so far are pretty interesting results. It's uh, in Zambia, most of the large mines that have been discovered before they were a mine, when they were exploration project, have been discovered with with uh, uh, an average of uh, you know uh, copper uh, part per million and ppm of about 80 ppm. Okay, that's an average. It looks pretty low, but we need to understand in in Zambia the uh, soil is pretty leached, so it's diluting the uh, the minerals. So when you have an 80 ppm in average at surface, then uh, you have something pointing in a potential deposit somewhere. Okay. And uh, uh, as an example, uh, first uh, first quantum sentinel mine, which is the largest deposit in uh, in tonnage in uh, in Zambia, okay. was discovered with peaks value of 120 ppm. So 50 ppm average, 120 ppm uh, uh, peak values. Okay. Hey. In copper. And uh, what we see in our case, we have some values up to 325 ppm copper, 280, 250. Uh, the average is in the mean of uh, 50, 60 ppm at the moment, but we see some very large anomalies. Uh, now we're just awaiting the balance of the, uh, because that was preliminary results. We're waiting the balance of the, uh, we received, I think, 780 samples out of 1,900. So when we receive the balance of the results, we will be in place to define correctly these anomalies and you know look at the size. I know one is 2.5 to uh, kilometers by four kilometers. So, 2.5 kilometers by four kilometers. Yeah, yeah. So for an anomaly, a soil anomaly is pretty large. It does not make that we have a deposit necessarily, but it points in that direction, okay? okay. So now what we'll have to do next is do again some soil sampling in fill. And uh, that will be quick. It's a one month program and a month after we have the results. So I would say by September, October at the latest, we will have some drilling, uh, drilling targets established on that specific, on those anomalies. Okay, so Pierre, so at the same time as we're waiting for this permit to go through, we have this all going on and it looks like it's heading in yeah. the right direction. Yes. So <clears throat> yeah, this is, so we're looking at a pretty good, uh, I mean, I guess, uh, average to get in this is a pretty good low uh for uh the average investor to to to, to put some money in because now you have another project so if i remember correctly i mean your stock was at like 23 25 cents at a certain point two years ago um and that was just with the project that you have uh that you're waiting for the permit i mean now you're advancing other projects you get that permit back i mean before losing the project, our stock has hit uh, 30 cents. At wow, that okay. time, it was giving us a market cap of about $50 million Canadian. Okay. We went down to five, six million after we lost the license. Normal. Uh, now we're probably trading, I didn't check today, but around 10 million. Okay. So I expect that when we get the license back, yes. the market cap could probably go back to 15, 20 million pretty quickly. I think so too. I'm not expecting to go back to 50, 60 million immediately because we're not in the same market than June 2021. That's and true. the price of copper is not the same that at that period. The price of copper was $4.30 per pound. It's been now, been it's two, it's, now it's now three sixty five, something true. like this. So, yes. so because of that, you know, to be realistic, I'm 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 not expecting we will go back immediately to, to uh, that level. But with the right work, with the right drilling results, I think we can go back to that level, you know, in short to midterm. Definitely a growth, a growth starting opportunity. By, starting with 20 million would be a, a first good step. And uh, that, that's what we can see. You know, on a short notice, we may probably double, you know, it's like a double wow. the, the current market cap. That's very, very good. And yeah, that's right. And then, you know, if we get out of this uh, macroeconomic nightmare that we're all uh, living, um, we could probably see some uh, very uh some exponential growth on that uh on that front uh pierre uh before we wrap this up i just i wanted to ask if you had anything else that you wanted to probably mention to uh the shareholders out there um uh you know something that that they can look forward to uh before we close off 
Well, I, first, I would like to thank all our shareholders for their strong support over that difficult period. And I will, I will tell the ones that are still there that you have been very patient, but we're now really near the end of the, the you know that difficult journey. We're really near of that. So uh, keep your patience for a little while again, and uh, we will certainly be rewarded again with the with the license back, and uh, then all the projects you know going in the right direction. Uh, we're we're still very confident we will get the license back, and everything will turn in our favor. Thank you very much, everybody. This is Pierre Olivier of Deep South Resources. Always remember to research, prepare, plan, execute. Uh, stay strong. Thank you so much, Pierre. And Thanks. Have a nice see you day. Again. I'm always happy to talk to your subscribers. All right. Thank you so much, Pierre. Thanks. Have a nice day. Between plays, it's the journey and what you do between where you are and where you want to be. Research. Prepare. Disclaimer. Between plays has a contract with said company in this video at the time of recording. Between plays only takes contracts with companies we believe have an opportunity to deliver a product or service based on our own research. That being said, always do your due diligence. Seek professional financial analyst when investing. This video is for entertainment, educational, informative purposes. See description for more information. Between plays, bridging the gap between companies and investors.